As the week ends and the sun sets, it is truly a joy to see all of our brothers and sisters in Christ here with us today. Whether you are a student, faculty, staff, visitors of our congregation, or our online worshipers, we welcome you with open arms to our week of prayer program entitled, Embraced. Embraced. Who am I? That God cares. Well. I am Evan Kahlo. And I am Sofia Zaragoza. And, and happy, happy Sabbath, Sabbath to, to everyone. everyone. Throughout the past week, we've been blessed with the many messages from our pastor, Kenroy Campbell. And this week, and especially tonight, marks his 10th session here. Indeed. So with that, I actually have a message for you. A question, rather. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Sofia. Which message struck you the most? Well, it has to be yesterday's message, especially during the morning session. It was entitled, Honey, I'm in Love With You. And the pastor spoke of how relationships are, you know, 
a reason and a season. They happen for a reason, of course. And I've got to scroll, select, and delete anyone else that God did not prepare me for. What about you, Sophia? Well, if I had to pick, it would be this morning session that was entitled, Don't Lose Your Praise. It talked about how we shouldn't lose our testimonies about our Lord and to be a magnifying glass of God's goodness and greatness to other people. And for this evening, we'll be blessed with another sermon entitled, Learning to Lean While Traveling, Trusting in Jesus. Well, that seems perfect for those who have traveled through the storms of life, survived the darkest days, and even gone astray. That's right, Sophia. So it seems perfect, especially for those who were reminded that God is our strength and our solid ground. He is there, and He will be true to us. So, before we move on, we would like to give a quick reminder to please refrain from using your phones during the program. And we would like to also announce that we are still accepting prayer requests that you could drop down at the boxes located at the lobby. After all, neither the helpless nor the reckless are beyond the reach of God's love. Along with this, we invite everyone to join us tomorrow for the Sabbath school service that will start at 8.15 a.m. sharp to be followed by a communion service. In the afternoon at 4 p.m., everyone is invited to the sundown worship at the Centennial Park. During the Sabbath service, we'll be collecting a special offering, especially for the indigent. Thank you for that, Evan. So with that, prepare to be surrounded by God's love. And allow yourselves to be enwrapped in His grace. Let, Let us, us all be, be embraced. embraced. Shall we all stand as we sing our theme song, My Savior Cares?
be seated. I was blessed to be born into an Adventist family. Even though my parents were both converted by God's grace from another denomination to our SDA faith, I am the third obedient, kind, and handsome, my mom and dad said, among four siblings. When we were young, we were taught to acknowledge and serve God who gave us life and blessings. Praise the Lord because I was baptized in 2016 even though I didn't know God very well. And I hadn't been able to show myself and the people around me that I had a God to serve because it wasn't too visible in my attitude to be a Christian. Many times, I go to church on Saturday morning, but in the afternoon, I teleport to school for training. And the saddest thing is that sometimes I can't go to church because of personal preferences. I prayed to the Lord God that I wanted to be serious about my commitment to Him as His child. When my cousins and I vacationed at my aunt and uncle's house for almost a month at Polillo Island, Quezon, I experienced the embrace of the Lord in my life. In family worship, there is morning and night, so it is impossible for me to not encounter the Lord in my life because I also want to know Him more as my Savior and be much closer to Him. I felt the Lord's embrace in my life so much that in other words, I transferred schools so that I could keep the Sabbath holy without any hindrances. When I return home, I encourage my family to have family worship too. We are having evening worship even though it is not consistent. It is truly a blessing to have a family worship. As I continue to have a genuine relationship with the Lord daily, especially by attending morning and evening worship in the dorm, sunrise or sundown worship in small group, or even by attending church services every midweek, vesper, sabbath, I see more wrong behaviors that must be changed for His glory. It brings Joy and thrill. Kilig po ba? When you feel in yourself that God is constantly moving and helping in our lives so that we can be better children and servants of Him. Praise the Lord because many things have changed in my behavior because of my constant communion with God. Before I finish this prayer promotion, I just want to give an illustration. When we are in a relationship with someone, or if we are dating someone, we want to be with them for the rest of our lives. We want to talk to them daily so that we can get to know them better. That is what God wants from us when we accept Him as the Lord and Savior of our lives through baptism as exemplified by Jesus Himself. In our continued relationship with the Lord, we will discover many truths and miracles that the Lord has done and will con 
continue to do in our lives for His glory. God wants us to have a constant relationship with Him daily. God wants to have a relationship with us, with you, my friends. He wants us to have a life that's fully surrendered to Him every day. Many things will change in ourselves and will make us joyous and better because we continue to see the character of God in our lives and we continue to desire to imitate His behavior and lifestyle. There are things I've done in the past that I'm not proud of. I, become, I became hooked on vices and habits that have done more harm than good. I want to personally ask you a question this Sabbath. Have you experienced God's love? Have you experienced His embrace? Will you give Him a chance to change your life? Will you give Him a chance to embrace you with His words and promises every day? If that is so, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ, can you please raise your hands? Can you please show it to God by raising your hands? God bless you. God bless you all. God sees you. God knows your heart. And God knows your struggles. Please give Him a chance to do great things in our life. May God bless us all. Good evening to everyone. To anyone present, physically or online, prayer is a wonderful thing to have, to have this relationship with God, as Kuyazaki said earlier. Can I get an amen? And speaking of prayer, our focus this evening for this season's of prayer is that uh, we pray for guidance through life's journey and wisdom in every step you take. Now that we have our prayer focus out of the way, let's go to the flow. So first off, the praise team, the wonderful one behind me, is going to sing a short chorus. And then after that, you will be given two minutes for your individual or your group prayer. And then after those two minutes, I will be concluding it. And then after that, it will be finalized by the praise team again, who will sing after and to those who are able, please kneel with me.
Heavenly Father, as we continue to live for your purpose, as we continue to walk through our journeys in life, we ask this. Please impart in us your divine wisdom in every step that we take. We may falter in the path you made for us, your children. So we also ask kindly for guidance as we go through the narrow way for your glory. We bring back, O oh, glory and honor to you, O oh, God. In Christ's name we pray. Let the whole congregation say, Amen.
Happy Sabbath, everyone. It is indeed a joy to be in the house of the Lord on his holy Sabbath day. A day that he has set aside for us to come together to praise, to worship, and to adore his holy name. And I'm grateful that God has given us the strength to be in his presence at this time. We, in fact, uh, my, my family is here tonight. Amen. Amen. My wife and my child are here. Uh, they are right in the middle. Okay, that's my wife right there. And my child is by her side. I'm grateful to have my family with me. Amen. 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 Tonight is our penultimate night of the or session of our week of prayer. Tomorrow will be the ultimate. Uh, tomorrow we also have communion service. Amen. Amen. We look forward to communion service. And for those of you who may not be Seventh-day Adventists, but you are baptized members, it's an open communion, so I'm sure you are welcome to be a part of it. So we look forward to Holy Communion. We look forward to baptism. And also we look forward to the preaching of the gospel. Amen. Amen. We look forward to a grand day of praise and worship as we lift up Jesus. The topic tomorrow night, tomorrow, sorry, tomorrow, will be chained to Jesus. Chained to Jesus. If you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to turn with me to the book of Mark, the fourth chapter, and we will consider verses 35 through to 41. Mark chapter 4 verses 35 through to 41. I invite you to find it if you have a Bible physical or it's on your phone or tablet wherever it is. I invite you to, to find Mark chapter 4 verses 35 through to 41. I read from the English Standard Version tonight. You can read from, you can follow in whatever version that you have. My version read the text this way. On that day when even had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat just as he was, and other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? 
And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Simple subject for the next few minutes. Learning to lean while traveling. Learning to lean while traveling. Your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed, wherever you are. Our God and our Heavenly Father, one more time, Lord, you have given to us to hear a word from you. We pray that you will disappoint us not, but that you will first take a life coal from your altar, place it upon my lips, so that the words that I speak will not be mine, that they will be yours for there is no word Lord that I can speak of myself that will inspire or encourage somebody but your word your words can make a difference in the lives of humanity and so tonight Jesus I pray you will be with those who are listening and watching on the internet and those who are listening and watching in this auditorium speak Lord for your servants listen in Jesus name Amen learning to lean while learning to lean while traveling. It was 1992, Barcelona to be exact. It was the Olympics. It was the 400 meters semi final. Assembled among the competitors was a 27 years old figure who had his umbilical cord cut in Bletchley, England. With 65,000 people beholding what would go down in history as one of the greatest disappointments in sports, yet one of the greatest displays of humility and determination. Derek Anthony Redman was on his knee in lane five. His previous achievements told him he could cross the finish line first. His dream was alive and his determination was unmatchable. The gun trigger was pulled and Derek Anthony Redman was on his way in the race. However, 150 meters in the race, the former record holder and world champion began to go down from the tear of an hamstring. Down he went. Down he went. Nevertheless, with courage in his heart and strength in his passion, he crumbled to his feet and he began to cry in a loud and clear tone. There is no way I am getting on that stretcher. I am going to finish my race. There is no way I am getting on that stretcher. I am going to finish my race. Tears in his eyes. Disappointments on his heart. Broken heart in his experience and crumbs in his foot. But he hopped on and on. He hopped on and on. Blasted from the stands. Barged around securities. And unto the truck was his father with these words. That's my son out there. That's my son out there. His son, Derek Anthony Redman, lean 
on his father with showers of tears falling from his eyes as they cross the finish line. My brothers and my sisters, as we have come down to this auditorium, to this church today, Jesus and his disciples had the same idea when they set out to cross over Jordan. The disciples thought that the crossing over will be smooth and safe. But like Anthony Redman, aren't you glad today on the onset of this message? Aren't you glad that we have a father who is able to, to carry us across the finish line of our race on this earth? Aren't you glad that we have a father who sees our pain and who is willing to take us on his shoulder? Aren't you glad that we have a God who, when we fall by the wayside, he is so willing to lift us up. He's so willing to hold us in his hands and to lead us along life's way. The songwriter says if he carries the weight of the world upon his shoulders, I know my brothers, he will carry you. I know my sisters, he will carry you. Here in the book of Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through to 41, we find Jesus and his disciples about to take a trip to the other side of the Galilean Sea. Brothers and sisters, there are three simple points that I'm going to share with you. Crossing over, storms are underway, leaning on Jesus. Crossing over, storms are underway, leaning on Jesus. Crossing over, Jesus having had long day teaching and preaching to a large crowd he was tired and weary so he says to his disciples let us cross over to the other side leaving the crowd verse 6 36 says and leaving the crowd they took him with them in the boat just as he was and other boats were with him leaving the crowd you see the crowd could not come with the disciples on their journey the crowd is not qualified to journey with them the crowd would only be an obstacle in the disciples experience with Jesus the crowd is of no value to the disciples experience across the Galilean Sea Brothers and sisters, there are some things that you got to leave on this side if you're going to get to the other side. There are some things that you got to drop off as you travel in this world. There are some baggages, some problems, some uh, stuff that have been holding you down for many years. You have been hard pressed by these baggages stuff in your life that are not making you better but for 10 years some of us are still carrying those stuff uh, for 5 years for a year for a month there are some things we are called to unshackle ourselves of the things of this world we are called to let go a life of sin let go the pleasures of sin. Let go self-centeredness. We are called to let go some baggages that have created a stumbling block in our lives. For many years, there are some things that we have been carrying, some things that we have been struggling with, some things that we have been praying to God about. We have pleaded, we have fasted, 
fasted. We have come to church hoping that somehow God will alleviate this thing, will remove this thing, but it still bothers us. It's still, we are still struggling with it, but brothers and sisters, if it is not making you better, it's time to let it go. If it is not creating a positive impact in your life, it is time to say goodbye. Oh, brothers and sisters, not only should we let go some things out of our life, but we need to take Jesus with us. Notice with me in the text that even though you send some things out of your life, and now you're crossing over, you need to take Jesus with you. I need to take Jesus with me. The Bible says in verse 36, And when they had sent away the crowd, that's the disciples, they took him with them in the boat. Notice verse 35. Notice verse 35. I want you to read your Bibles. I want you to, to keep your eyes on the text. Verse 35 tells us that Jesus says, Let us cross over. That's what 35 says. Let us cross over. Are we together? Or let us go across to the other side. Let us cross over. Verse 36 says, they take him with them. Maybe you missed it. So let me read it again just so you can get it. Verse 35 says, Jesus says, let us cross over. Verse 36 says that the disciples take him him with them notice brothers and sisters understand Mark is saying that even though Jesus initiated the journey the disciples had an option whether to take him or not on this journey Jesus is saying I will show you the way I will show you the blow the blueprint I will show you how you can get by how you can cross over but you have a responsibility you got to choose to take me with you you got to place me in your heart you got to open your heart so that I can come in because Jesus is a gentleman he is not going to he's not going to get in if you don't welcome him in and so he says I'm showing you how you can get from point A to point B but guess what you got to you got to be willing to allow me to lead you you got to be willing to allow me to take you with me you got to be willing to place your hands in his hands you got to be willing to say, Lord, take the wheel. You got to be willing to say, Lord, it's not my way, but it's your way. It's not my will, but it's your will. You got to be willing to say, Lord, I do not know enough to lead my life, but today I can place my hands in your hands. You got to be willing to say, Lord, lead me. One songwriter says, I must have the Savior with me, for I dare not walk alone. Another songwriter says, take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort gives you. Take it then wherever you go. Precious name Oh, how sweet. Brothers and sisters, the man who walks with Jesus does not walk alone. The woman who walks with Jesus does not walk alone. We got to be willing to allow Jesus to walk with us, to allow Jesus to lead our lives. In the event of crossing over, storms are on the way. So even though God is leading you now, that does not mean that there will not be storms. 
Doesn't mean that you won't have some rough times. Doesn't mean that you won't have some testing times. It doesn't mean that you won't have some challenging times and challenging situations to deal with. And not because you have been a Christian for 50 years does not mean that there won't be challenges. Brothers and sisters, there are storms on the way. And verse 35 says, A great windstorm arose. And the waves were breaking into the boat so that the boat was already filling. The storm forces itself in the boat. You see, the words beat in or break into the boat is the Greek word epibalen. It is in what we call the imperfect tense in Greek. But another thing that I want you to understand about this verb is that it is iterative, suggesting that the action is repeated. It means, therefore, that the wind, the waves, kept on breaking into the ship wave after another one wave after another kept on breaking in to the ship brothers and sisters sometimes our problems do not always come at once but one behind the other after you're through with disturbing relationship problems, then you're immediately faced with financial problems. Out of the storm of waiting to be accepted as a student at AUP into the storm of academic challenges. Oh, you're not with the preacher tonight. From the storms of completing your degrees into the storms of board exams. From the storms and the challenges of studying into the storms of the workplace from one storm to another one wave to another one problem to another but I'm so glad to tell you tonight that 2nd Corinthians chapter 2 chapter 4 verses 8 and 9 says but we are hard pressed on every side but not crushed perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not abandoned struck down but not destroyed I'm so glad that even though there are challenges that God is the one who is, who is leading Leading us, who is taking us across uh, our own uh, rivers. God is the one who is carrying us. I hear Isaiah 43 and verse 2. Verse 2. More in this mic, verse 2, Isaiah 43, and verse 2 says, When you go through the waters, they will not overflow you through the fire, and it will not burn you. Oh, brothers and sisters, understand that the hotter your battle gets, is the sweeter the victory in Jesus. But notice Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 31. The Bible says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint understand when an eagle flies into a storm unlike other birds that, that got to land what an eagle does it adjusts itself and it uses the strength of the storm to go a little higher. I just come back to tell somebody tonight uh, that you don't have to give up uh, when there are problems. Uh, you don't have to give up uh, when there are challenging times. Uh, you don't have to give up uh, when you are facing, uh, when you are facing your deepest nightmares. Uh, what we ought to do is to use the strength of our storms, uh, is to adjust uh, and go a little higher with Jesus adjust and go a little higher with almighty God you don't have to land you don't need to give up 
For in this world you will have tribulation. In this world you will fight battles. In this world you will be in problems. In this world, whether you're rich or poor, black or white, brown or black, it doesn't matter. You will have tribulations. The storm was in their face. They could touch the storm. The storm was in their fear. But the storm was also in their faith. Their faith, their fear, and their faith. Let me tell you, the storm can be in your face, but it does not have to be in your faith. You see the evidence of the storm, but it does not have to shake your faith. Um... It can be in your face, but it does not have to be in your faith. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says that they awake him, they awake Jesus, and said to him, Teacher, cares not to you that we are perishing. Verse 38. Their question is directed to Christ's interests regarding their safety. It means that they have forgotten who Jesus is. Their cry to Jesus suggests that they do not have faith in him to save them. Their cry is out of fear and not out of faith. How do I know that? Because verse 40 tells me that. Verse 40 tells me after Jesus awakes, he says to his disciples, Why are you so fearful? Saints of God, the disciples up to this point in Mark's gospel have seen Jesus cast out demons, but they do not see Jesus calming a storm. Up to this point in Mark's gospel from chapter 1 to chapter 4, they hear Jesus preaching about the kingdom, but they have not heard Jesus speaking to the wind. Just because you have not seen Jesus raise the dead in your life does not mean that he does not have the power to raise you out of some dead situation. Just because you have not seen Jesus healed the cripple in your family does not mean that he cannot do it for you. Not because Jesus has not showed up when you wanted him does not mean he will not show up when you need him. Not because he did not show up yesterday does not mean he will not show up today because God is an untime God. He's also suffering. He shows up when he wants to. And whenever he shows up, it is the right time. Whenever he shows up, he shows up and he does what is best for you. When God shows up and that's why we got to be patient with God. Uh, that's why we got to trust God because God knows your future better than you know your future. Your fear will cover your faith. The disciples, the Bible says, have no faith. Jesus says in verse 40, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? How is it that you still have no faith? Oh, brothers and sisters, some of us, we have seen God come through for us last year but we still have no faith. 
We witness God's love in our undeserving life yesterday, last year, but we still have no faith. Uh, some of us should have died last year. An accident uh, showed up, but God canceled it uh, and God navigated our path uh, so that our life uh, could have been spared, but we still have no faith. Uh, oh, some of us should be walking on crutch, uh, but God showed up uh, and God navigated uh, what should have been, uh, what should have, what should have caused us to be crippled. God showed up uh, and kept us in his hands, uh, but we still have no faith. Uh, uh, brothers and sisters, as we have come down to this church tonight, understand uh, that if we are going to serve God, uh, we got to trust him. The songwriter says, trust uh, and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus, but uh, trust and obey. He's worthy to be trusted. He can be trusted. His name is Jesus. And all we got to do is to trust him in the rough times. Trust him in the bad times. Trust him. And when things are going well, trust him. Oh, sometimes, you know, it's very easy, Pastor, Pastor Lani, it's very easy to trust God when things are going well, Dr. Arsley. It's very easy to trust God when things are going well, but it becomes difficult for many of us to trust him when we want a deliverance and there seems to be no way out but brothers and sisters remember that God is your creator he created you with a purpose with a future he knows where you are going and he knows how to take you where you are going we can trust him we can trust him today Oh yes, we can trust him. The disciples were so fearful. Mark says in verse 41, And they feared exceedingly, and said to one another, or they were filled with great fear, and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The King James Version says, What manner of man is he? Can I tell you today, he's Adam's redeemer. He's Abraham's promise. He's our king. He's our Lord. He's God. He's God yesterday and he's God today. Brothers and sisters, he is God all by himself. Not only is there storms on the way, but in the midst of our storms, in the midst of our difficult times, in the midst of our challenges, we got to lean on Jesus. Lean on Jesus. Oh, brothers and sisters, the Bible lets us know that while the storm was going on, Jesus was sleeping. Verse 38, verse 38 says, And he, but he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? The storm is coming. To annihilate, ostracize, demolish, degrade, depopulate, destroy, kill, and cancel the lives of the disciples. But Jesus sleeps. Can I tell you tonight that sometimes Jesus sleeps? Sometimes Jesus sleeps in your storms. Financial storms and Jesus sleeps. Educational storms and Jesus sleeps. Thesis 
writing storms and Jesus sleeps. Relationship storms and Jesus sleeps. Sometimes he sleeps so that you and I can have faith in him. I said sleeps, uh, sleeps so that you can stay longer on your knees knowing him. Sleep so that you can learn to trust him. Sleep so that you can have a testimony to share because without a test, there is no testimony. Sleep so that he can save you for eternity. The songwriter says when your waters are so, when your waters are so troubled, you don't think you count at all. Waves may seem like mountains when your boat is oh so small. But somewhere past the clouds waits a new day to begin. Sometimes it takes a storm to calm your storm within. Sometimes it takes a storm to know you need a shelter. When the anchors in your life disappear without a trace sometimes the wind will rage before you sail calm waters sometimes it takes a storm to find a calm within sometimes it takes a storm for you to know that God is a lawyer in a courtroom he is a shelter in a storm for you to know that he is your bread for you to know that he is your examiner in an exam for you to know that he's your teacher in a classroom for you to know that he's your doctor in a hospital for you to know that he is your God in the greatest situation he's your greatest deliverer sometimes he sleeps because the truth is tonight had God God not sleep had God not slept on many of us many times we would not be in church tonight because it was during those times that we strengthened our faith in him it was during those times that we stayed on our knees and we recognize how great he is how loving he is how kind he is thank God for the time he slept because you wouldn't be in church today because you wouldn't have known him you would not have known him but the storms in your life pushed you to your knees and you realize that that he's more than a friend you realize he's a savior He's a deliverer. He's a father. He's better than your best friend. That he doesn't leave you in a storm. Brothers and sisters, the reason we can lean on Jesus when he's silent and he's asleep, the reason we can do that is because of the words that Jesus says. Let us cross over to the other side. Jesus has already given us the assurance that we will cross over. The comforting words are at the beginning of the journey. It was Jesus who says, let us cross over. Brothers and sisters, the final reason we can lean on Jesus is that his words have power to save and to heal. For there are two words that Jesus says when the storm rages. Two words. The two words translated peace be still. The Greek word that translates as peace is zeopa, meaning be silent or shut up. It is in the present active imperative. Be still translates 
from the Greek word pethi moso, meaning quiet down or stay so. But what is so in what is so interesting in what is what is so important about this this word pethi moso is that it is in the perfect tense of the Greek. The perfect tense of the Greek denotes an action that is completed in the past but the force of that action continues in the present. In other words, the literal translation of Zeopar Pephimus is be silent, be quiet, and stay so. The idea that Jesus has in mind is that the star must be quiet and stay so until they cross over. Brothers and sisters, tonight the good news is Ziopa Pefi Moso. Peace be still. Stay quiet and continue to be in that state. One day your storms will hear these words Ziopa Pefi Moso. One day my storms will hear Zipa Pefi Moso. One day your storms, our storms, the storms of problem, of the storms that we go through will be over. Storms of trials and tribulations will be over. Our storms of sin, yes, sin and all curses will hear Zipa Pefi Moso. One day, brothers and sisters, the troubles of this world will be over. The trials of this world will be over. One day, Jesus, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, Paul says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of an archangel, with a trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh, brothers and sisters, Paul continues in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? One day, death will die. One day, Jesus will come. One day, our Christ will come to take us home. Revelation 20 and verse 6 tells us, Blessed are those who are part in the first resurrection, for the second shall have no power. Brothers and sisters, Revelation, the 21st chapter, John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for husband. John says there shall be no more death. John says there shall be no more sorrow. There shall be no more pain. There shall be no more death for the old order of things have passed away. One day death will be swallowed up. One day our God will come. One day brother and sisters we will hear the voice of Jesus calling it's time to go home it's time to go home Ellen White picks it up in great controversy the last chapter and the last paragraph she says the great controversy is ended sin and sinners are no more the entire universe is clean one pulse of harmony and gladness beats 
through the vast creation from him who created all flow life and light and gladness throughout the realms of illimitable space from the minutest atom to the greatest world all things all things animate and inanimate in their unshadowed beauty and perfect joy declares declare that God God, that God, that God is love. What a day that is going to be when everything will declare from the rising of the sun to the going down that God is love, that God is love. I stop by to say to somebody, keep on marching with Jesus. Keep on leaning on the everlasting in arms because in a little while we will go we will be going home in a little while we will see our savior and he will come to call his children we will be going home home is where the heart is home is where we belong learning to lean while traveling sometimes it is rough sometimes it is tough sometimes we want to give up throwing the towel walk away and say I can't take this church thing anymore but I say to you hold on a little longer because just over the mountain in the promised land lies a holy city built by God's own hand. Hold on, hold on. As my brother sings, as my brother sings, I wanted to contemplate that in your mind. To hold on in the rough times and in the bad times. Hold on. I left home to build my own life Traveled far and wide Searching for comfort without your light Chasing the pleasures of the world I had built Left me broken in my guilt I've come to see that the best for me lies in your embrace. So here I am, Lord, make me anew to live for your glory, your glory alone. You are my strength, my solid ground. You are true, you are there without doubt Through the storms of life, in the darkest days When I've gone astray, you say My child, you're not alone Do not be afraid, for you are my own Now that I'm home, where I belong, I know I am restored. Surrounded by your love and wrapped in your grace, I am now embraced. So here I am, Lord, make me anew to live for your glory. 
my strength, my solid ground. You are true, you are there without doubt. Not the helpless, nor the reckless, is beyond the reach of your love. You say, my child, you're not alone. Do not be afraid, for you are my own. I invite you to stand in the presence of God. I invite you to stand. I invite you to stand. Do not be afraid, for you are my own. Do not be afraid. Jesus is saying tonight. It may look as if I'm sleeping in your storm. But I have your back. I know where I'm leading you to. And I'm able to take you where I want you to go. And where I want you to be. Learning to lean while traveling. While traveling with Jesus, we learn lessons along the way. Tonight, those of you who are online watching, those of you who are watching right here in this auditorium, God is watching. And he says, my child, take my hand and allow me to lead you through your storms. Tonight, is there somebody who will take God's hand tonight and allow him to lead you through your storm? If you're online, you can indicate online. If you're right here, I invite you to walk from where you are and join me at the altar as we pray. You want to give God a chance in your life. You want God to lead you. You want God to take your hands. You have been doing it your own self for many years, but tonight, you're saying, Lord, thank you, my sister. You're saying, Lord, I want to take your hand. I can't do it alone. I can't go alone. I cannot walk alone. I have tried it and I have failed. I have tried it and I have not been successful. But tonight, Jesus... I just want to give you my hands. I don't know my future. I don't know what tomorrow is going to be. I don't know what people are going to say. I don't know what is going to happen to me the next minute. But tonight right here, Lord, I am placing my hands in your hands. I'm giving you me tonight. I've given you stuff but I've not given you myself. I've asked you to take things from me. Things I'm struggling with. I've told you, Lord, take this from me. But tonight, I'm asking you to take me. Take me, Lord. Take me. Take me, Jesus. Because if you have me in your hands, you can strip me of the things that should not be there. You can redirect my future. You can create in me a clean heart. You can renew a right spirit within me. You have taken stuff out of my life, but tonight I want you to take me. Take me. The songwriter said, take me back to the cross where I first found you. Take me back 
to the cross where I first found you. Somebody want to go back to Calvary where Jesus died, laid down his life so that we can have life today. It's been so hard trying to make it on my own. But Lord, I need you tonight to lead my life. I need you tonight to consecrate my life. I'm not my own. I belong to you. And I'm coming to you tonight. I'm coming to you tonight. I'm coming to you tonight. Is there somebody else online in this auditorium? Somebody else. I'm coming to you tonight, Lord. I'm coming to you tonight. I've made up my mind to follow you all the way. Lord, I'm not perfect. But I'm placing my hands in your hands for you can fix me up. You are able to walk with me for at Calvary you walked for me. Tonight your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. Our God and our Heavenly Father way back on the cross of Calvary there you laid a prostrate nails in your hands and in your feet you died you died you died so that we can have life so that we can have a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. You died so that we can be restored into a relationship with your Father. You died so tonight we can have salvation. Oh God, we are thankful. We are grateful that you died. Tonight your people have walked from their seats. Some may be in line who have walked in their hearts indicating the Lord take my life. Consecrate me one more time tonight Jesus they have come down to this altar they have different challenges you know who they are because the truth is from the pulpit to the pew we all need you and tonight we walk and we come before you we are asking you Lord to change us one more time we're asking you, Heavenly Father, to give us a new heart one more time. One more time, Jesus, rescue us from sin. One more time, O oh God, lift us up from the marley clay of sin. One more time, deliver us. There are some who have come down to this altar who may have not yet surrendered their lives to you. Tonight, O oh God, I pray that they will not leave this altar without placing their hands in your hands. O oh God, we know that in this time, in the valley of decision, that the devil will roar and is roaring. But tonight, O oh God, Remind your people 
those who have not yet surrendered to you that you are the author and the finisher of their faith and you who have walked with them to this altar is able to walk with them to eternity so father may you place your hands upon them and do for them what they can't do for themselves and we pray God that tomorrow when the water will be troubled that they will step into the water grave of baptism and say Lord to your will and to your way with my whole heart I'll agree my answer will be yes Lord yes keep us in your hands until you come for we ask it in Jesus name let the people of God say amen and amen God bless you have a good night God bless you see you tomorrow as we come to worship to praise and adore in the high and holy name of Jesus God bless you so he solid ground you are true you are there without doubt not the helpless nor the reckless is beyond the reach of your love you say my child your mother do not be afraid for you are my own. Do not be afraid. For you are my own. Very quickly, we have one important announcement. Please be informed.